Dear students, in this module we will be covering the population trends in India. The major learning objective is to provide the data related to various vital indicators like population size, growth rate, the sex ratio, the birth rates, death rates, life expectancy, the dependence ratios and the population aging, its phenomena with a view to understand the trends that exist in the population data over a period of time and how India started moving in demographic scenarios is an important objective of uh, this module. If you look at the population size of India which was 0.36 billion in 1951 has steadily increased to 0.84 billion in 1991 and it moved further to an extent of 1.21 billion as per the latest census of 2011 census. And the graph clearly depicts the steady increase in the population size of India which was if you look at in 1901 it was around 238 millions which came up to 1028 millions in 2001 and further moved to 1210 millions in 2011 census which clearly indicates the phase in which the population growth is happening in the country. If we take further the density of population which is an indicator for assessing the extent of population coverage per square kilometer, there is a steady increase in its size. For instance, in the year 1951, the population density in India was as low as 117 persons per square kilometer, whereas in the latest census of 2011, it has increased more than threefold and to the extent of 382 persons per square kilometer, which clearly indicate that the density of population is steadily increasing in the country. And furthermore, if we look at the increase from 1951, it uh, increased to 142 per square kilometer in 1961, further increased to 177 in 71, and in 1981 census it showed to, to uh, 216, and 267 was in 1991, and further to 325 in 2001 census, and the latest is 382 per square kilometer in 2011 census. The major concentration of population, especially when we talk about the urbanization context, the major cities like Greater Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, which are major metropolitan cities of India, have a larger share of the growth rate of uh, urban population which clearly depicts the skewness that exists in the urbanization in the country. If we look at the projected figures for the future, for instance, it is estimated that the population of India is going to be to the extent 1.3 billion by 2021 and further it is going to increase to 1.4 billion by 2026 which clearly in indicates that there is going to be an absolute size of population increase over a period of time. But there is a positive thing in this growth is that the rate of population growth is declining over these periods of time, which indicates the success of our small family size norms and also the success to the extent of uh, family planning programs uh, achievements. Now when we look at the population and also the growth rate over a period, it clearly indicates that when we refer to 1921, which was the period for Great Depression, the growth rate was negative to the extent of minus 0 
and further from that period onwards there is a steady increase in the growth rates starting from 1931 the extent of growth rate was 1.04 further showed in 1941 1.33 then slight deduction to 1.25 but overall the positive growth continued to show its influence and it has come to the peak in 1981 to the extent of 2.22% and from that period there is a steady decline in the growth rate wherein you can see in 1991 the growth rate is slightly come down to 2.14% and further it has come down to 1.97% in 2001 census and the latest census of 2011 showed that it has further reduced to 1.64%. What this clearly indicates is the the rate in which the growth is occurring in the case of population size is a one way of a indication that the growth is decline and the population size is coming down no doubt about it but the alarming is in terms of absolute numbers let's look at the extent of urbanization the share of urban population to the total population no doubt it is increasing especially from the period of our independence of 1951 wherein the urban population was 17.3% increased further to 23.3% in 81 furthermore to 27.8% in 2001 and the latest figure is uh, around one third of the total population of india is in urban uh, areas like to the extent of 31.2% what clearly indicates is that no doubt the percent of population in urban areas is steadily increasing but the pace of urbanization in india is slowly coming down especially from the period 1971 to 2001 at increase in urbanization in absolute numbers has increased the pressure especially on the urban areas in the services especially in the infrastructure housing environmental degradation and these are all which are important for a quality of life so this is an indication wherein the quality of life in urban areas also started diminishing the picture here clearly depicts where not only the population size started showing its improvement over a period of time especially in urban areas it is also is a very interesting that the number of towns or urban agglomerations also started increasing that means more and more urban areas are started coming up which is an indicator for uh, the development in the sense if you look at the data well in 2001 census it indicated a, a number of towns and urban agglomerations to the extent of 2 uh, 2843 if you look at in 2011 it increased steadily to 7935 urban centers which clearly indicates that more and more urban growth rate is happening and also the settlements started coming up which indicates that our urbanization is in a positive sign of development but at the same time if you look at the growth rate the decadal growth rate of urban population where it shows that uh, while it was 41% in 1951 re came down to 26% in 1961 and then 38% in 71 further increased in 81 to the extent of 46% and from there the decline started to 36% in 91 2001 shows 31% and almost it is equal in 2011 census of 31.8% one of the important contributory factors for urbanization is a migration wherein the migration as a component of population clearly indicates the extent of people who are moving from various uh, rural areas to the urban places if you look at the rural urban migration and the urban uh, all india migration rates if you look at for 1000 per 100% it clearly indicates that uh, there is a, a slight uh, increase in uh, rural female especially where in uh, 1983 the percent share of uh, 
female migrants is 35.1 steadily started showing its increasing trend and the latest figure of 2007 to 2008 indicates it is almost half of the female population in rural areas can be declared as a migrant which is a major contributory factor is the marriage and other reasons for their uh, migration. Uh, besides urbanization and two important uh, components of population growth are birth rate and death rates. If we we'll take birth rate for instance, there is a clear indication that in India the birth rate started showing its declining trend, especially from 1951 which was uh, to the extent of 40.8 births per 1000 live births, it has shown that almost it is half from 1951 and the latest figure of 2012 shows that the reduction is almost half and it is now the birth rate is 21.6 per 1000 population which is very clear that the crude birth rate was uh, relatively higher in rural areas than in urban areas and the latest figure shows that a uh, uh, fertility rate that is uh, expressed uh, through crude birth rate is uh, as high as 23.1 in rural areas whereas in urban areas it is as low as 17.4 percent. However, we have to keep in mind that states performance for birth and death rates are of a different nature especially for states like Bihar and Uttar Pradesh, the birth rates are still higher to the extent of 27.7 and 27.4 while the lowest birth rate can be noticed in the small state like Goa which is as low as 13.1 which clearly indicates that uh, the emphasis should be by focusing on different states and uh, its programs and schemes have to be tuned for a state level. When we look at the death rate is also very interesting that uh, while death rate was as high as 25.1 in 1951, it is almost one third of that figure when we see its situation in 2012 where it is almost a single digit of 7 percent. That indicates that we are successful in uh, achieving or uh, shifting the mortality situation at a higher ages and the lesser and less number of people are exposed to the risk of mortality. And if you look at uh, this rural urban context, the differences, the mortality is higher in rural areas to the extent of 7.6 percent, whereas in urban areas it is low as 5.6. And highest de death rate was recorded in state of Orissa, which is 8.5, and uh, Nagaland, which is a small state in northeast, as to the extent of only 3.2. So that clearly depicts the state-wise variations in the mortality situation. If we take both together, which is expressed as a natural increase, it can be seen that the vital rates both are showing a steady decline over a period of time. For instance, crude birth rate, which was as high as 40.8 in 1951, has come down to 21.6 in 2012. Whereas in the case of death rate, which was very high of to the extent of 25.1 in 1951, has come down to 7.0. What this clearly indicates that the mortality level has been significantly brought down in a country, whereas a birth rate is, a, though it has come down to half, but still there is a large scope for us to see that it will further come down to the, this thing. And in this regard, rural areas should be the major focus for uh, bringing its rates further to lower levels. While analyzing the mortality, it's very important that we have to bring it with a focus to your different age groups because the risk for mortality is at uh, different levels for different age groups. For instance, very sensitive indicator like infant mortality, which is the uh, age of uh, below one year of a child birth is an important indicator to know the level in which the mortality, overall mortality situation occurs. So if we look at the infant mortality rate, it was as high as 146 in 1951, which has come down steadily to as low as 42 per thousand live births in 2012. 
though it is a very significant number but further reduction is important where the efforts have to be made so as to see that infant mortality further comes down another alarming thing is a gender differences in infant mortality it is a it clearly indicates the neglect shown to female child to the extent 44 is the infant mortality rate in uh, for females whereas in the case of males it is uh, only 41 so that is another area where we have to emphasize how best gender equality can be promoted or in the girl child can be taken care of adequately so that the neglect can be minimized and if you look at over a period of 1951 to 2012 infant mortality rate which was uh, as high as 146 in 1951 has come down to 110 in 81 further come down to 80 in 1991 and further to 66 in 2001 and the latest is 42 in 2012 the other mortality with respect to age we should see is early childhood that refers to 0 to 4 years that is also is a clear indication that there is a lot of a uh, reduction that can be noticed in child mortality which was uh, in 1971 was 51.9 has come down to 12.2 in 2011 that means it is almost one fourth of the figure in 1951 so nearly 40 years uh, uh, period this uh, uh, achievement has been noticed what it clearly indicates that uh, to a great extent the assurance for child survival is existing in the country however we have to be very clear that the there is a still a level is very high especially in rural areas compared to urban areas indicating clearly the access to health and also the attention paid to child is a still uh, on a priority in a case of uh, urban areas whereas in rural areas there is a lot of scope uh, for improvement of uh, increase in the health access and infrastructure should be the priority state wise also it is very clear that most of the northern states like madhya pradesh uttar pradesh there is a very high level of uh, child mortality whereas a, a state like uh, kerala which has shown as low as 2.6 and showing a lowest uh, child mortality rate so that is why uh, state wise variations should be taken note of while implementing child related programs in these respective states so there is a clear cut uh, reduction that has noticed during the 40 years period when we see the extent of reduction in child mortality the other dimension in demography is a sex ratio that is number of females per 1000 males if we look at the the extent of sex ratio which was to the extent of 900 during the period it has uh, up to 1931 sex ratio was 950 and above for every 1000 males so indicating that uh, overall the sex uh, bias towards uh, uh, you know the extent of bias or neglect for girl child was not significant in the earlier years but uh, thanks to the medical technology which is an not in favor of uh, females it has brought down heavily the reduction of uh, uh, bringing female number into uh, well below the 950 but uh, there is a celebration and a positiveness in uh, the sex ratio well the sex ratio was uh, to the extent of uh, 940 in uh, Uh, 2011 a uh, sex ratio was to the extent of 946 in 2011 there is a slight increase in 2011 and also during the last two decades this increase started occurring that shows that there is a realization and also the health education and awareness creation in the communities towards uh, the uh, giving preference to both the sexes treating both the sexes equally and also creating awareness about uh, not to neglect the girl child and also the specific programs for girl child are also showing its results 
which are reflected in higher and higher sex ratio that started showing in the country. And in this graph, you can, in this data, it is clear that the sex ratio was as high as 972 in 1901, further come down to 964 in 1911 and 955 in 1921. So, slowly, it uh, every decadal, there is a reduction that has occurred over a period of time. But uh, the reduction was to the extent in 1971 of very high reduction of 930, which has further slightly increased in 81 to 934, but again it has come down in 1991 to as low as 927. But as we discussed from the 2001 census onwards, during the last two census periods, there is a positiveness of celebration in which uh, the extent of uh, increase in sex ratio has started showing uh, positive results. So that 933 sex ratio in 2001 has further increased to 940 in 2011. The other indicator is uh, total fertility rate, which is an indicator for fertility level. And if you look at the number of uh, births per thousand uh, uh, during the entire reproductive span, if a woman produces the total number of uh, children as high as six was noticed in 1951, while in 2001, it has come down to 3.0. And furthermore, it is expected that the reduction has further brought down to 2.4 during 2011 to 2012, and it is a, a clear indication that uh, the total fertility rate started declining which is one of the important uh, achievements that reflects on family planning program and also the people's uh, awareness and recognition to adopt a small family size. However, we have to keep in mind that uh, rural urban differences still are very large. For instance, TFR in rural areas is still at a higher level of uh, 2.6, whereas in urban areas it has come down to the extent of 1.8. This graph clearly indicates how the total fertility rate over a period started showing its declining trend. For instance, in 1971, TFR was as high as 5.2, has come down to 2.9 in 2004, and from then onwards, there is a slow and steady decline, and the latest of 2009 shows it is a 2.6. Another important indicator of uh, reflecting of uh, uh, access to health and the improvement in medical technology and the uh, increase in the health aspects is an indication of life expectancy at birth, which clearly in the case of India, it showed that there is a steady increase in the life expectancy at birth. For instance, while it was around 40 years, during the period 1951 to 60, further improved to around 50 years in the mid 70s and further improved to 60 years in the 1990s. And during the last 5 to 10 years, the data showed that life expectancy is around 65 years, which shows clearly that the achievement in medical technology and also people's access to health has tremendously improved and our life expectancy is showing that results. However, the just gender differences also we have to keep in mind where the life expectancy at birth is relatively better for females. It is as high as 67, whereas in the case of males, it is 64, which is universally observed that life expectancy at birth for females is a, at higher level compared to male. And that the graph clearly depicts that the different life expectancies for gender-wise clearly shows that though it is uh, uh, in both the sexes it is increasing, but the significant increase is noticed in the case of female elderly. The resultant factor with all these changes in the demographic scenarios is a, a major aspect is population aging, which is an indication that uh, 
the number of elderly population in the total population is increasing. What it indicates is that the percent of elderly population, especially 60 plus, while it was as low as 5.5% in 1951, has increased to 8.6% in 2011. And furthermore, if we see the working age population, it is uh, also slightly increasing from 1951 to 2011. But the childhood population is clearly showing its declining trend, which was indication that uh, the, so the country is uh, moving towards a population aging scenario. Given this, if we look at different uh, age groups, broadly, if we take uh, three segments of population, like a childhood population, working age population, and the elderly population, in these three segments, it is very clear that uh, the childhood population started declining, the working age population more or less is uh, uh, stabilized, but uh, there is a slight increase in the working age population, but the significant uh, change is uh, among the elderly population. That is how the population aging is noticed in the country. One of the indicators for assessing population aging is through median age. When you take median age as an indicator for population aging, it clearly shows that median age is increasing. For instance, while it was uh, as low as 20.5 years in 1961, has steadily increased to 22.5 years in 2001, and furthermore in 2006, it is as high as 23.59, and the data, projected data shows that it was uh, 25.5 years in 2011, and it is expected to further increase to 31.4 years in the year 2026. So the, what this clearly indicates is that population aging is here to stay and we have to be ready to accept this demographic change where the successful demographic transition which has brought down the vital events has also has shown its influence on median age and also the resultant factor of aging population in our society. This figure clearly indicates the dependence ratio and its changes over a period of time. And we have to be very clear that the childhood dependence ratio is started declining, whereas the old age dependence ratio is increasing. And over totally, if we look at the increase in the total dependence ratio, which is a very important for us to understand that the number of elderly, how they have to be taken care of in our society. Similar is the case when you see the rural urban differences also, that there is a steady increase in the elderly population, not only in rural areas, but also in urban areas. That is why the elderly population and the total population, if we look at, there is a steady growth in the overall population. Overall, in summary, we can say that in this module, we were able to discuss about the various demographic uh, scenario that is uh, there over a period of time in the country and also across different states and also the variations that exist between rural and urban areas. And furthermore, gender-wise differences also we have seen with various demographic indicators starting from population size, its growth rate, sex ratio, the uh, yeah, different uh, age groups uh, proportion of population, the aging and the life expectancy and also we have seen the median age how it is increasing. So overall we can say that the demographic scenario in India is showing a positive trend wherein one side the population size no doubt is increasing but the growth rate started coming down. In the view of that the urbanization is showing its uh, positive influence more and more urban towns and urban areas started increasing. Migration is an important factor that contributes for the urbanization. And if we look at the fertility and mortality figures, the mortality and fertility started showing its declining trend. By virtue of that, life expectancy is showing a, its increasing trend. And overall, the society is experiencing population aging. That is why the aging is an important segment of a population when we look at from demographic angle, which requires our attention, and that is how 
the demography over a period of time is uh, showing that the different age groups and the changes are uh, no doubt are moving in a significant way. However, the de successful demographic transition paved the way for population aging and that is where the society stands as on today.